This is a Gear Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Mr. Perez. And you're listening to the Better Live Than Dead podcast brought to you exclusively on Gear Network. Listen in. Hi, welcome to the podcast. So, what's up, peoples? Episode 54. 54. Of the Better Live Than Dead podcast. Myself, Ryan Wolf. Me. I am Ryan Wolf. That's right. That's you are. Who are you? I'm Mr. Perez. You're that. You're the same guy that's on the podcast almost every single week. Pretty glad, much. Glad to have you back. Although, again, you're on the FanDuel hotline, which is okay. It's nice when technology works in our favor, but uh, sometime soon we'll be getting you back in the, in the studio. I know, uh, unfortunately, it's the summertime. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh and it, it appears that August is my month, my bad month. I know okay. uh, this weekend I'm going to uh, Cedar Point with, with uh, my girlfriend. Who I'm I'm all about spontaneous trips, and it was a spontaneous last last weekend. She's like, "Hey, do you want to go to Cedar Point next weekend?" I was like, "Sure, let's go." Uh, and then the fifteenth, my sister's that's, getting. That's, that's not really spontaneous. She was Sorry. just she. Uh, Lewis, for me, the guy who likes to plan everything out like months in advance, that's pretty damn spontaneous. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, like, spontaneous is like you and your girlfriend get together, and she's like, let's go to Cedar Point, and you drive five hours to Cedar Point. <laughs> Not, well, that was, like, it was, it was kind of, it, it was spontaneous in the fact that she was just sitting there, and she's like, hey, what do you want to, instead of coming over next weekend, do you want to go to Cedar Point? And I was like, uh, that's random, but yeah, let's do it. Cool. It works. Point, Good time. It, it works out. I, I'm I'm excited. It's gonna be nice to get out of here for a little while. Uh but then my sister gets married the fifteenth, and I think after that everything should open back up. So that'll be good. I hope. That's cool. I hope because I want to get you. In, I want to get you in the studio. We've we've got a nice little area set up down here at the uh, the Eminem family estate, and everything. Are you with your new spot yet? Everything. Yeah, everything is everything is looking good, feeling good. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at, so no complaints. Good. Good. Nothing wrong with that. I've got uh, I've got two laptops in front of me right now, a TV above me that has my Twitter feed on it, so it's uh it's a good it's a good day so far at least. I I have a steering wheel in front of me and a windshield and the open road. Heading to Niagara Falls to do a couple back room training teach people some stuff about our new products. That'll be fun. Yes, yes. Hey, so uh, I just want to let you know, I know we're going to talk a little about baseball towards the end of the show because there's a lot of baseball news happening, but I just came across the wire here uh, live as we record. It looks like the St. Louis Cardinals are going to acquire Brandon Moss from the Cleveland Indians. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. That's a big deal. A lot of pretty good trades happening so far this week. Absolutely. But guess what? We'll talk about that later. Right now, we've got to talk about all the other news in the week, uh, in the past week of sports. Um, again, uh, as as of press time, it's a Thursday, so if uh, you don't hear something that you thought we should talk about, we'll probably catch it next week. So we do apologize, but hey, life comes first. Uh, so we're here now. Like I said, it's a Thursday morning. We're gonna get this thing done. Uh, starting off in the NBA, Orlando acquires Shabazz Napier from the Miami Heat in, a, in what appears to be a salary cap dump. Uh, Boston acquires Zoran Dragic from Miami. Uh, so, awesome. So Miami is just clearly moving guys to, to clear some space up. Speaking of clearing space up, this is this was a nice little move. Portland acquires Mike Miller, Brendan Haywood, and two second round picks, and in that trade, Cleveland gains roughly thirteen a thirteen million dollar trade exception. So they gain two guys. I believe Miller's going to get bought out. I'm not sure about Hayward yet, but uh, we will certainly we'll certainly see what happens there. But like I said, Cleveland gets a huge trade uh, trade exception, which will allow them to most likely bring in a very talented player. To uh, to help them get closer, I guess, to the championship than they were last year. Yes, yes. Uh, in Milwaukee, uh, the Bucks finally it, it appears they've reached a a, a, f- a verdict, I guess, in their uh, arena deal. The assembly votes the the uh, the Wisconsin assembly, I should say, uh, votes to approve the new arena deal. All it needs to do is be signed by the governor, and then that will be happening. 
So good for them. Good for Milwaukee. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, Milwaukee taxpayers, because that doesn't seem like a very good deal. But you know what? At least the Bucks are going to be around for a long time. That's a true story. Uh, moving over to NCAA football now, and, and this is an interesting thing, Perez. Ohio State quarterback Braxton Miller uh, was set to be embroiled in a battle to to uh, to try to become the starting quarterback for the Ohio State Buckeyes next season. There's uh, two other guys, including Braxton Miller, uh, going for the spot. Well, Braxton Miller pulled out of the competition because he will move to wide receiver for his senior season. Do you think this is a good move for the, for uh, for Braxton Miller? I don't know. It might be. I mean, he's he's got the size and the speed. I, I just I don't know if it's I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I, I think I think it's a smart move in terms of when he did it because he's not going into the NFL draft saying, "Well, I was a quarterback. I can be a wide receiver." He's going to go into the NFL draft saying, "Look at, I am a wide receiver." Wide receiver. That can't be a quarterback. Yeah, I've put stuff on tape. You can see me play wide receiver. I mean, will he, he'll probably have uh, a, a tough time learning all the routes and stuff and running and learning how to run a route. But he's he's got good hands. He's got a lot of speed. He's very athletic. It could be a good move for him if it, if it works out. It works out. If it doesn't, you know, it's one of those situations where you gave it your best shot and you can't really be pissed about it. But I, I'm sure if he shows any sort of athleticism and any sort of potential someone will take a flyer on him oh yeah absolutely uh, moving over to ufc now misha tate defeats jessica i in unanimous decision to become to again become the number one contender for the women's bantamweight championship and uh tj dillashaw defeats henan barrow in their rematch by fourth round tko to retain the bantamweight championship now that fight right there i'll tell you what i didn't get to watch it i was going i went to see uh southpaw with my with my lovely girlfriend but uh, I was getting text updates from my brother, and he was telling me that Dillashaw was just absolutely picking apart a Barrow uh, almost surgically. And those are the kind of fights that, that really impress you when when an up-and-coming guy like Dillashaw... I mean, Dillashaw has obviously uh, developed into the fighter a lot of people thought he would be. But when you're when you're picking apart a, a superstar like Kenan Barrow with ease, that's impressive. Okay, you're going to hear me order my breakfast right now. Okay, we'll we'll hold. I'm not even going to put you on mute. That's fine. I'm just going to stop talking so we can hear you order your breakfast. <laughs> uh, yes, can I get a uh, bottle of water, a large iced coffee with the Chips Ahoy flavor with uh, cream and sugar, and then a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich on a pretzel roll? I'm sorry, what's the sandwich? Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese on a pretzel roll. Bacon, egg, and cheese, and a pretzel roll. On a pretzel roll, yeah. You want a hash brown, yeah? I'm sorry, what? You want a hash brown? No, thank you. Okay, um, you want some muffins? Let me get a, uh, let me get a Boston cream donut. The Boston cream, how many you want? Well, just one. Okay, so you want a bottle of water and large ice coffee cream and sugar and chips and bacon, egg, and cheese, and pretzel, and one donut, right? Yes. Okay, it's going to be 944, coming up. Thank you. You're welcome. That sounds delicious, man. The, you know what? The Dunkin' Donuts breakfast sandwiches on the pretzel rolls are actually really good. I'll have to try it sometime. Because the pretzel rolls are, are actually pretty darn delicious. And they also have these pretzel twists. And I'm a huge pretzel guy. Like I love pretzels, uh, especially the soft-baked pretzels. And the, pre- the pretzel twists are really freaking good. And I, I just I can eat it every day, and that's just not good for you. So. <laughs> I, if I, they I, served it, if they served it with like some mustard or some hot cheese, oh, dude, it'd be it'd be a, it'd be a wrap. My my favorite is taking honey mustard uh, salad dressing and using it to dip in pretzels. Okay, it tastes good. It tastes right. real good. I've been I eating like a lot that. of pop tarts lately, so I've just been like eating sugar for breakfast, which is a horrible idea. I like uh, pops. They're very good. They're very addicting. Uh, Last thing in UFC, Ronda Rousey defends her women's bantamweight championship this weekend against Beth Correa. Uh, <laughs> UFC 190. Both women are undefeated. Perez, I have to ask you, who do you have in this fight? Oh, Ronda Rousey. All the junk that Beth Correa has been talking and talking about the suicide stuff, and 
I think Ronda Rousey, you know what? As long as Ronda does not let her emotions get the best of her and, and do something stupid, she's going to destroy Correa. I look forward to it. I look forward to any Ronda Rousey fight, even though they only usually last about 35 seconds, less than 35 seconds, I should say. Yeah, but this one, this one has the potential to go a little longer. We'll see. Well, remember, the only person to ever take her out of the first round was Misha Tate, so we'll we'll see how that one works out. Right. I mean, maybe we'll see a chink in the armor, but then again, we may see Ronda Rousey come out and completely destroy this woman. That's a very real possibility. Either way, it wouldn't surprise me. Right. I'm just waiting for you to get your food. No, go ahead. Keep talking. Okay, I just didn't. I don't, I'm not sure what your situation is over there. The people with Dunkin' Donuts can look at me funny. Yeah, hey, whatever. I'm doing my sports show right now. Sorry. No, you're so, fine. Somebody put an ice cube in my bag. That's what I'm oh, okay. Someone put an ice cube down the poor girl's back. Ha <laughs> ha That's terrible. Which had to be cold. That's not nice. Although, yeah, but it's kind of funny. Oh, it's hilarious, though. It is hilarious. Like, thank you. Just waiting on my sandwich. Just waiting on my sandwich. That's okay. So yeah, I got, I got, I got Ronda Rousey. I don't even think, I don't even think it's going to be close. I mean, Beth might get a shot in, but I doubt it. Oh, thank you. You too. All the stuff that she's been, all the junk that she's been talking, I think Ronda Rousey's really going to look to make an example of her. Give her the business, if you will. Yes, yes. Moving over to the National Football League now. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the, yeah, the news this week is going to be short because a lot of the news is baseball. So the, this news segment is actually ending after the football talk. So this is going to be a quick segment, but don't worry. We're going to talk a lot more. Just stick around. National Football League, the New England Patriots signed cornerback Terrell Brown. Denver's defensive end Derek Wolf suspended four games for a PED violation. The New Orleans Saints cut linebacker Junior Gallette. I know this leaves a lot of dead cap space. I couldn't find the exact number. I did some research, but just couldn't come up with anything. But uh, it's it's an interesting move for the Saints because Gallette has been in trouble as of late. Uh, he was, uh, I, I believe, he he was videotaped as hitting uh, hitting a woman or smacking a woman in the face with a belt or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, That's then, not good. And then he just got pulled over recently with a, a suspended license. I did see something just a few minutes ago on the tweet bots that um, uh, that Washington, the, re- the 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 Washington Football Club, could be uh, taking a look at Gallette. But you have to remember too, he'll probably end up being suspended. But I mean, he deserves to be suspended at this point. Uh, the NFL will not yeah, he allow. He's like a real gem of a human being. Yeah, most football players aren't. We know that by now, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just put that out there at the start. Uh, the NFL won't allow Junior Seau's family to speak on his behalf at the Hall of Fame inductions. Now, this has always been the policy, at least for a handful of years. But the family was looking for a chance to kind of memorialize Junior Seau at his induction ceremony. Now, I, I'm believing, if I'm not mistaken, the National Football League doesn't want Seau's family to talk. Because Seau's family is going to, they, they, they feel like Seau's family is going to push home the point that he killed himself because he played football, because of his head injuries caused by playing football, that to this day football still denies ever happened. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's a tricky situation. Like, I understand both sides, you know, like you definitely want to talk about what happened to your family member one of the greatest to play the game in his position. And yet, if you're in the NFL, you're like, yeah, hey, you're going to get up there and say some stuff we don't want you to say. Yeah, so, uh, you can't talk. It's 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 an interesting situation. I, I, I think they should let the family talk, but then again, you've got to be very careful because, you know, if if, uh, if they go up and they say something controversial... It makes the NFL look bad, and the NFL doesn't want to look bad ever, so they, they're going to cover their ass. But Yeah, but the problem is with that is there's a whole bunch of stuff right now making the NFL look bad. Yeah, they don't. well, they don't need this 
also added because if it's just like an ambush, you know, it's gonna make them look. It's just gonna make the NFL look poor, and the NFL already looks terrible. But I mean, if they bring this to the light and and, and just keep hammering it home, who knows what happens next? Exactly. I mean, so, someone needs to. Someone needs to go up there and 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 go into business for themselves and say, look at. The reason my father is dead is because he killed himself due to head injuries caused by football, but your league denies that concussions happen from playing football and right. they're full of crap. Exactly. That's what that's what that needs to, that's what needs to happen, but we know that won't happen. Nope. The Indianapolis Colts cut offensive uh lineman Goster Sherless. I know he was in Buffalo on a a, a tryout or, or whatever, and then he went to uh, Detroit, I believe, as well. Uh, but that wraps up kind of a really bad free agency a couple years ago for the uh, for the Colts who went out and signed a bunch of big names and they all didn't really pan out too well. No. The Carolina Panthers lose offensive tackle Jonathan Martin. He retires due to a back injury. Now, he was the one in uh, Miami who was being bullied by Richie Incognito, went to San Francisco. That didn't uh, seem to work too well. Goes to Carolina, finds out he has a back problem, and if he, he'll need surgery if he wants to... Um, He'll need surgery if he wants to stay in football. He decided to just retire. So I guess good for of him. Of course he did. Good for him, I guess. Uh, defensive end O.C. Yumanyora, free agent. He'll uh, reportedly sign a one-day contract with the New York Giants. Uh, long-time New York Giant, and he will retire with the franchise. So that's good. It's it's always nice when that happens. It's always a nice little bow on the end of things, I guess. Especially for right. O.C., who was the face of that defense for years. Years. The, the Arizona Cardinals hired Jen Welter, who was believed to be the first female assistant in National Football League history. Now, this is funny, Lewis, because last week we were talking about Becky Hammond, <laughs> yes. who who could potentially be the first women's head coach or women's coach. She's the first women's assistant coach, I believe, in the NBA. Now she's looking to become the first NBA or women's head coach in NBA history. And then the NFL hires uh, the team, the National Football League hires the first female assistant. So clearly, we're seeing a change here in the we way are. that things are done, which is good. Because this lady is very talented. She knows football up and down. Uh, everything I've read about her and everything I've heard about her has been just absolutely phenomenal. So hopefully it really works out for her, and this is just the first of many jobs that she'll have uh, in her National Football League career. We'll see. I almost feel like, you know, they'll respect you more in an NBA locker room than they will in an NFL locker room. Well, I feel, I, I just feel like in any situation, if players are being disrespectful to coaches, that's that's a really, really, really bad idea. Um, because it doesn't matter how good of a player you are or how much pull you have in a locker room. If you're disrespecting a coach, let alone a female coach, uh, you won't be long for that franchise. Or the coach won't be long for that franchise. No, I don't think. I don't think. I think it'll be players because you can't let players disrespect coaches and then say, "Well, the, the, we we don't like you, so we're going to get you out of here." I mean, well, if the coach I, is an asshole, if the coach is an asshole, absolutely. But if 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 it's a a good coach and they're just being disrespectful because it's a woman, you know, get out of here. Well, we'll find out. Hopefully, this experiment works, and you're going to have to go back, back and bleep those two words out. Asshole? Yeah, it's a swear word. You can say asshole on TV. Okay. We're allowed to say just asshole. Like, just, are we? Yeah. I, I would let John know anyway. Do you want to say yeah. it? No, I, I really have no need to say it. You can say it if you want to. <laughs> You're like pressuring me into it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you say it. Swear, Lewis. The F, the, the F word and the S word and the C word and the D word are the ones we bleep out. Everything else, we're fine. Okay. All right. New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady has his suspension upheld. The league would have reportedly cut the suspension to two games if Brady admitted guilt. It sounds like uh, we're headed to federal court with this one. Now, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like the National Football League had a leg to stand on, but apparently they still do. Uh uh, according to multiple sources, apparently Tom Brady destroyed his cell phone, which uh, again is is still kind of murky because it's not really it's really unconfirmed. But a lot of people are saying he destroyed his cell phone, which then uh, allowed the National Football League to say, "Well, look at you know we're we're done with Deflategate. Deflategate's over. Like we're past that. Right now, we're talking about the fact that he 
purposely destroyed evidence to avoid uh, prosecution, if you will. Right. So that's that's how the National Football League is still suspending him. Uh, yeah, that's true. And then you know, of course, they're coming out saying, "What are you talking about? We just, we didn't destroy no cell phone." Hey, real real quick, uh, it does. It, he'll probably. Uh, I, I'm guessing Tom Brady will probably end up being suspended for four games because we just yeah. see here. Daniel Kaplan uh, at D Kaplan SBJ says, "Big news: Minnesota judges ordered this morning the NFL PA lawsuit over Brady to be transferred to Manhattan, where the NFL first filed. Which means that, uh, well, first off, the, the Minnesota judge has been the one who who often votes in favor of of players instead of the NFL. No, 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 no. no they wanted to get that judge, and they did it. They got yeah, another. That's judge. what I'm saying. The, the Minnesota court that they keep going to." is the one that often rules in favor of players. The National Football League wants to keep it in, in Manhattan, so it's right in their backyard. Plus, they have the upper hand with apparently with that court. So uh, I don't think this will end up well. I mean, maybe maybe Brady gets a two-game suspension, but at this point, I think the NFL is standing strong with their four games, and we'll see Tom Brady week five. That's what it, That's what it appears like to me. Week six, I think. Yeah, week six. Sorry, because they have a bye week. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't have really much to say about it. I mean, it, it is kind of is what it is. The National Football League continues to be slimy, but Tom Brady hasn't really done himself any favors in this situation. Yeah, you know, but I, you know, Robert Kraft, he came out yesterday and said some really damning things about the NFL, and I was really surprised by that. Um, but I almost feel like Adele with all the missteps he made last year, is trying to make an example of Brady saying he's going to be a tough, you know, commissioner from now on. I've, and and you're doing it in a way where you're doing it against a player where there's really no evidence. Well, the thing about it, know. sorry, the thing about it too is that Goodell always, till, even, even to this point, it still seems like uh, Roger Goodell just really does things on the fly. Just kind of, you know, well, uh, and, and I mean, I, I understand it's a different scenario. It's apples to oranges, but you look at a guy like Greg Hardy, had a 10-game suspension, goes down to four games. Then Brady has, for, uh, that was for domestic assault or domestic violence. I, I don't right. remember the charges, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And then Brady gets suspended four games for not cooperating with the National Football League in, a, in an investigation, in a league investigation. So maybe you need Roger Goodell to come out and explain to people, like, hey, this is why we did it. Like with with that with the NHL, for instance, when there's a player suspended, they'll sit there and they'll tell you they'll they'll put out a video saying, "Look, this is why he was suspended. This is what he did wrong. Here's what he did wrong, and here's his punishment." So people understand right. what's going on. Where the NFL is just kind of like, "Eh, hey, whatever. You you punched your girlfriend in the face in front of a camera." Okay, well, we'll give you two games. Yeah, two games. Two games. Oh, you did it again? Okay, four games. Oh, wait, you're going to appeal? Okay, three games. Like Le'Ve- Le'Veon Bell. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this. Actually, this was the next one, so I'll mention it now. Uh, his suspension was knocked down from three games to two games uh, for a DUI arrest last season with LeGarrette Blount where they were busted with weed in their car and, and uh, Le'Veon Bell was under the influence. Uh, right. It was knocked down from three games to two in an appeal. Why? Like, can't you tell us? Can't you give us a valid explanation of why you do these things? Not just, right. hey, we're gonna do it because why not? Exactly. It just seems. It just seems to me like the National Football League doesn't really know what they're doing or how they're gonna do it. They just do it, and that's not good. I agree. I, I'm not. I'm not arguing with you there. I just think. I just think Roger Goodell's an idiot too. Well. Yeah, he's really proven that over the last year, year and a half. He's just a he's just a, a a puppet for the for the owners, and I mean, in this situation, you know, I understand Brady uh, performed uh, in an act that makes the National Football League look bad and makes the game look, uh, you know, puts a little dent in the game. But but did he? Things things happen. Crap happens. Like people have done things. Th- year for years to gain a competitive advantage and, and it, when someone gets caught it looks bad no one will let this go because it's Tom Brady and everybody hates Tom Brady because he's not on their team 
that's how it always has been, unfortunately. Right. I mean, it's 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 like with the Cowboys, Lewis. Everyone hates the Cowboys because they're the Cowboys. No valid reason other than they're the Cowboys. Right. Like, you ask anybody who hates the Patriots, why do you hate the Patriots? Well, I, don't know. I just don't like them. That's not a valid excuse, dog. Like, yeah, they win a lot. That's why I don't like them, because they win a lot. Because I want to be that. I want my team to be that team. That's why people don't like the Patriots. I mean, that's that's how it's always been. So, the stigma will never go away with this. Tom Brady's still a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, Tom Brady's still one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Don't let anybody try to tell you any differently. But oh, absolutely. The National Football League has to figure out what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Quick. I don't like to do any Patriots because I don't really like any team from that area. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, the Buffalo Bills terminate contract, uh, the contract of offensive guard Chris Williams after he uh, failed a physical. So he was terminated with a failed physical designation. Williams has had a recurring back issue, had surgery last year. Uh, apparently hasn't gotten any better in terms of football shape. Uh, so he's gone. Good news out of Kansas City. Safety Eric Berry cleared for training camp following an eight-month battle with lymphoma. Uh, he's said to be cancer-free, so that's great, great, that's great, great news too. for him. That is very good news. And last but not least, uh, Washington extends linebacker Ryan Kerrigan into a five-year, uh, to the tune of five years, $57 million. Not bad. In 64 career games, Kerrigan has 38 sacks. Good payday. That's a good payday, that's for sure. Well, hey, with, with that being said, this is the news you need to know. Now you know it. When we get back, it's time for Lewis to say hello to someone. And That's maybe, right. just maybe, he can tell us a story. Stick around. More of the Better Live Than Dead podcast next. Yeah, yeah. While you're listening to this podcast, make sure you follow us on social media. You can follow me at WolfBLTD on Twitter. And you can also follow Mr. Perez at MRLG Perez. Make sure to like the podcast on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast. And make sure you check us out at BLTDsports.com. This free and independent sports cast is made possible when you shop the Gear Network store through Amazon. Visit GearNetwork.com and click on the Amazon banner to shop through Amazon's thousands of products at great prices delivered right to your front door. Again, that's GearNetwork.com and click the Amazon banner at the top. You're listening to Better Live Than Dead on the Gear Radio Network. Back here on the Better Live Than Dead podcast, Ryan Wolf, that's me, and Mr. Perez. <laughs> What's that, up, people? That's the guy on the phone or on the Skype. Now, uh, this is the time of the podcast every single week, Perez, which you say hello to somebody. So, today, who would you like to say hello to? Well, you know what? I was surfing around the old interwebs and I ended up on Instagram, but I was looking at a, a, a particular photographer on Instagram that I follow, and I came across this very pleasant picture of this girl, and that's who I want to say hello to this this fine Thursday morning. Her name is Jade Nicole. She spells Jade, J-A-Y-D-E, and then Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E. Uh, you can look her up on the tweeters. You can look her up on Instagram, or... What I found out this morning that I didn't know when I was first uh, going to say hello to her is that she actually used to be a Playboy model. So if you want to see some really pleasant pictures, just <laughs> Bing or Google Jade Nicole, and you'll get all sorts of pleasantness. Um, yeah, I, I was very surprised when I put her name in, in Bing today. It was like, bang, oh, look at that. Why, thank you, Jade Nicole. Um, so she's hot. I would recommend, you know, checking her out. You'll enjoy the experience. That's who we're saying hi to today, Jade Nicole. She's now an actress. I believe she was in Southpaw, actually. I know you said you went and saw Southpaw. Yes, Which girl? Correct. What'd you think of me? You know, it was it. it it's to, for me because I had no clue going in what uh, what to expect. It started off for me in my head kind of slow, and then the storyline hit, and then it was kind of predictable. 
But it was a really good movie. I mean, it was just very, very, very predictable. I've heard it was extremely depressing. Yeah, it uh, it starts off very joyous and exciting, and then something happens, and you're like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing here. Uh, and then something else happens, and you're just like, what the hell is going on? And then, you know, it's the, it's the redemption angle. Right, 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 right. You know, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Eminem was supposed to be that character. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because uh, Eminem did most of the music for the movie. Yeah. Um, and he was slated to actually be Jake Gyllenhaal's character, but then uh, they switched production companies, and that's when M actually no longer got the role. I mean, they still obviously kept the music, uh, but they, they didn't give him the actual role of the character. So that would have been interesting to see. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I guess Jane Nicole was in it. I know she was at the premiere, and I believe on her Instagram page she says, go see Southpaw. Um, so I believe she's actually in the movie at one point. I'll have to check her out, and I'll let you know. That is actually what I was binging this morning to, to, to verify if she was in that movie. But then I got distracted by all her other picks. <laughs> so, never really did find out. I should have just went to IMDB, but then I would have had the pleasure of finding her other career. So, so, I, would, so. I would definitely suggest going to see the movie. Or when it comes out, at least seeing the movie. But uh, you know, it's 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 a it's an interesting film for sure. I enjoy right. it. Cool, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. So, hi, Jade Nicole. So I'm just looking through the list. You are beautiful. She has one tattoo. Actually, she might have more now, but she has one tattoo right above her pelvic bone. So it kind of draws your eyes to that area. I believe it says respect. She wants everyone to respect their selves, their bodies, that sort of thing. <laughs> I respect your body. I respect you, Jake Nicole. I don't see anything, but I can go back on IMDb after the show and check it out. Cool. All right, with that being said, I think it's uh, it's time. Drop my bumper. Gather round, kids. It's story time with Mr. Perez. So, this week for story time, I'm just going to mention a few things that happened to me last week. Uh, us here at Microsoft have released the few new devices to our retail vendors after, you know, a couple of weeks ago I talked about how they cut 7,800 people and I lost half of my team and it was real, you know, iffy time at this, you know, particular moment. Well, the last couple of weeks we've launched a couple of devices and we have more on the way, but last week we launched uh, a tablet for AT&T called the Surface 3. Now, like your brother uses the Surface Pro 3, the uh, the Surface 3 is a slimmed down version of the Surface Pro 3. It, it's instead of a 12 inch screen, it's a 10 inch screen. Uh, instead of running Intel i processors, they run Intel Atom processors, and that's really the only difference. It's an awesome piece of machinery that you get for a really good price on AT&T. Well. They launched on Friday, and half of well, half half of the AT and T's actually I take that back. About ninety five percent of the AT and T's I've visited have sold out of them already. Wow! Which is, yeah, which is awesome uh, for me, uh, but uh, and for Microsoft. But so I was in one of the stores, and. It was on launch day, so this would be last Friday, and you know I'm pumping up the product. <laughs> and uh, one of the reps of the store that I was in decided to buy it, so I was like, "Awesome, you know that's great." Because not only not only will you have the machine, but you'll play around with it, and you'll be able to 
tell customers exactly what it's like firsthand. So that's always good. That that makes it easy. So one of the other reps was telling me that they were thinking about getting a, a tablet themselves. And the guy says, you know, I don't know. It's either going to be the Surface 3 or an iPad Air. I'm leaning towards the iPad Air. So I looked him dead in the eyes, and I was like, so what you telling me? What you literally just told me was you want to spend more money and get less tablet. And he was like, what are you talking about? So I broke down all the features for him over what 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 we're offering with our tablet as opposed to what the iPad has. And he's like, yeah, that's true, but it's an iPad. And I was like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, you want to spend more money and get less features. Like, who does that? That You know, that's, that's like a bad idea. Saying, yeah, that's a bad idea all around. So... So while I was breaking it down to them, there was some customers standing there watching the whole interaction, and uh, they were looking at a S6, a Samsung S6, or an iPhone 6. Um, so I looked at them, and I said, I'm going to break it down to you like this, buddy. You can get the new phone we just launched, the 640XL. You can get the tablet. You could get the keyboard covered for the tablet, and you could get the pen all together for less than either an iPhone 6 or a Samsung Galaxy S6. Like, you get all of that for less than one phone. I was like, come on, that, 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 that's awesome. Like, you, like as, a, as a sales rep, that should make you happy because that's accessory sales when you're looking at the pen and keyboard, and you're putting out more product. And he was like, oh, I didn't even think of it like that. And I was like, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> to help you guys. So while I was doing that, the customer was like, is that true? And I was like, yeah. So I broke down the price points for them. And they were like, oh, wow. So that's, that's a really good deal. And I was like, yeah, it really kind of is. So the customer... I ended up walking out of there with the with one of my phones, the 640XL, the tablet, the pen, and the keyboard. And actually, I think they bought a Bluetooth uh, speaker also uh, for less than the price of a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Wow. And, yeah, I mean, it makes me chuckle because, like, if you look at, like, the 64 gig... S6 Edge or like the 128 gig, like the 128 gig for the phone costs over a thousand dollars just for the phone. That's madness, right? And they're about to make a bigger version of it, so that's crazy. But to think that you could get a really good phone, a tablet that's one of the best tablets on the market. Uh, the keyboard cover and the pen for less than one of those phones is absolutely ridiculous. I might have to uh, to come to you next time I'm looking to get a phone because I, I've I've got a weird thing where I have a phone for two years and I'm like, okay, I, I've enjoyed it, but I want to try something different. So maybe. A maybe. phone for two years is always kind of a long time to hold on to one phone. But absolutely. I understand what you're saying. We have some stuff coming out that's awesome. But so the customer walks out of the store with all this stuff, and the manager comes over to me and says, you know what, like, I, I really, like, I appreciate you helping our reps understand the, the product and, and teach them the product, but I really don't want you to get involved with the sales process. And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't normally get involved in the sales process, but I was talking to your rep. They overheard it. And then they decided to go with it. So he was like, yeah, but, and before he could finish, why does another customer walk over and go, Hey, I want to get the same thing that that customer just got. <laughs> I want the tablet, the keyboard, the pen, and the phone. 
And I just looked at the manager, and the manager was like, never mind. And he walked away. <laughs> Dropped the mic right there. Right, exactly. Like, there you go, buddy. What, was, what were you saying? Because I just sold two tablets. Actually, while I was in that store, I sold three tablets. And my job is not, like, my sales force, I'm a, I'm a field sales force rep. So, like, sales is technically in my title. But I don't really do any real sales. I just train the reps on how to sell our product. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I just sold three tablets. Clearly like, you do a good enough job because you can you can still walk in a store and sell it like no big deal. Yeah, it, it really isn't. The thing is, you know, Microsoft, the Windows Phone platform, the Windows Phone platform has a really bad rep. And it's and, and it's and I want to be completely honest with you. It's a well deserved rep. Uh, for a while, the the Windows product on phones was was kind of iffy. Uh, it didn't let you do a lot of things that other platforms could. But now what's happened is when Microsoft bought Nokia and they took over the platform, they've created and expanded the platform in such a way that it outshines other platforms at this point in a lot of metrics. There's some things that it still can't do, which is annoying, uh, like the podcast uh, applications. You still can't record a podcast on a podcast application. That's a bad idea. They need to catch up with that. Yeah. Uh, and actually, it may catch up with Windows 10, which started launching yesterday. Uh but Cortana, which is our personal assistant, beats first every other personal assistant in online competitions from like tech companies that do a lot of online competitions. Cortana beats them handily a lot of the time. She's the only personal assistant that can do like people based reminders. So I can say Cortana, the next time Ryan texts me, remind him I can't do the podcast on Saturday, it has to be another day. And you text me, I'll get a pop-up notification that says, remind Ryan that you can't do the podcast on Saturday. She's the only one that can do that. Um, I can say, Cortana, remind me to take my vitamins every morning at 7 o'clock. And she'll be like, okay, no problem. Remind you to take your medicine every morning at 7 o'clock. Uh, while every other carrier has like a reminder, you have to go into the phone to set up the reminder. Siri can't set up a reminder for you. S Voice can't set up a reminder for you. Cortana can't. You know, I might. I. I I'm honestly. I, I. It all depends on cash, but you know, uh, I'm. I'm up for a new phone in, in. I think next April. Maybe I'll get a Windows phone. Maybe I don't know. Man, we got some stuff coming out that's just disgusting. Well, I'll just call you because you'll set me up. You'll you'll upsell me like a mo- a mofo. You'll get me on the, the phones and the tablets like that guy. Right, exactly, exactly. And it was a mother and daughter that, that walked out with the first set of tablets, right? Um, and here's the funny part. We were, you know, she was like kind of heavy and hard for a couple minutes. And, and then I was like, listen, what can I do to convince you to actually go with this? And the, the daughter looks at me and goes, take me to dinner. <laughs> And I was like, cool, I can do that. No problem. I'll take you to dinner. Um, I was like, you want my number? And she was like, yeah. So I gave her one of my work phone numbers um, that I hardly ever turn on. So she might be texting away that number. I don't know. I hardly ever turn it on. <laughs> it's my T-Mobile device. I just, I haven't been to T-Mobile in a couple of weeks, so the phone's just sitting there turned off. But, uh, so, you know, when I turn it on, I may get, like, 20 text messages. But I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, sweetie. You're a good-looking girl. I'll take you to dinner. Yeah, I'm did not she, taking you to dinner. Did she not see the ring on your finger? Oh, no, dude. My <laughs> ring has actually been out for repair because when I went to get it uh, inspected, for its update, they discovered two of the black diamonds were loose, so they sent it out. So I didn't have the ring on my finger. Never mind then. That explains it. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I, I actually took a pic of the mother and daughter. 
I'll send it to you later because the daughter's actually really cute. If I was single, I would have taken her out to dinner. <laughs> but uh, I'm not, so I'm not. <laughs> but that's really, you know, that's what's kind of happened this past week. That's my story. That's a good story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no speaking, problem. Speaking of last week, I'm going to hijack this real quick. I'll tell you what. Uh, moving is not fun. Uh, my hands and my wrists hurt really bad because uh, my left wrist, actually, I was moving a bookshelf, and the shelf was not completely pushed into the bookshelf. Like I was just moving the shelf, no joke, from the wall maybe six inches out. And apparently, I think I just had a, I think I just had a bird fly into the front of my car. Uh-oh. Because there was a puff of feathers. I would say so. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. Breaking news. Uh, I had the uh, Lewis kill the bird. It appears. <laughs> I moved the like shelf. Out, I moved like the sh- my name is Randy Johnson. Yeah, exactly. I moved the shelf out about six inches, and the, the shelf fell and hit me in the wrist. Oh, that's not so good. So I have a giant. I have a. I have a nice little nick on my wrist, which doesn't feel too well. And then yep. uh, my my hands are all cut up. You know, my my hips and my calf muscles were garbage most of this week. So. Awesome. Oh yeah, it's been it's been a blast. You know, I'm glad to be where I am. Uh, very happy with with my surroundings. And uh, Delilah has has learned how to open my bedroom door and wake me up every day, which is thoughtful of her. <laughs> the first morning, no joke. The first morning, uh, I was I slept over here last Friday. I had my bed here, so I just threw a sheet on it and slept here. I moved in Saturday. Uh, I was laying in bed and I hear the door open and I was kind of half asleep and Delilah walks in and, and just goes, hi, Uncle Ryan. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Time to wake up. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. I can't even be mad at that. Right. How can, how can you? She's so cute. Exactly. And you she, know, did, she hey. did the same thing today. She walked in, she, she opened the door and she goes, hi, nobody's awake. So I figured I'd come hang with you. And I, I mean, I was awake. I was just trying not to get out of bed. And then, right. uh, and, uh, she just comes in with a bunch of stuffed animals and just puts them on my bed and just comes and talks to me. That's funny. So I was like, okay, again, I can't, I can't be mad, but no, you are, you are going to have to make sure you never sleep nude, though. Yeah, uh, well, if I do that, I'll lock the door. I, I actually, after the first night, I, I did get a door lock. That's good. That's good. Just I don't really doesn't really matter to me lately because if I need to be up early, I'll just leave the door unlocked. So if he does show up, she'll at least wake me up. Right. So right. it's, it's like a it's like a built in alarm clock, so it's kinda nice. That's funny. With that being said though, story time has concluded for the fifty fourth right. episode. I would say the fifty fourth time, but we haven't done fifty four stories. No. We'll have to no. find out how many stories you've done so we can we can be all fancy about it, but Story Time has concluded when we come back. Lewis knows what we're talking about. I do. I'm wait I was waiting for it. That was a perfect setup and you dropped the ball. Sorry, bro. We're talking baseball. Yes, yes, we are. See, I was going to say, Lewis knows what we're talking about, then I was figuring you would sing, but it's sing okay. it. Yeah, but normally I wait till you say we're talking baseball, then I break out a song. That's fair. Either way, yeah. a lot of Major League Baseball talk. Stick around. Do not go anywhere. There's a lot of news to talk about, a lot of trades to break down. Plus, we're going to talk about the Baseball Hall of Fame. Stick around oh. for more. Better Live Than Dead podcast, next. Hey, Don, how's it going? Living the dream. I'm actually just getting ready to do this commercial. Oh, you mean the commercial where I tell our listeners to tune into Gear Network every week to listen to our show, Get Ready America, that one? Uh, yeah, John, that's the one. They can also listen to us talk about news, sports, whatever's on our minds, that... And a little of what's on our listeners' minds, but they're just too nice to say it. Well, that, Don, is a real humdinger. Yeah, humdinger. Come join us this and every week for Get Ready America exclusively on the Gear Radio Network. And the Gear Network app. A successful product does not become a successful product on its own. Look at the Gear Radio Network, for example. We're a prime example. We had a lot of help getting here, and we can help you get where you want to go, too. Advertising rates are very low to start off here on the Gear Radio Network. Visit us at gearnetwork.com. Click on the contact link to send us an email, and we can work out the details. Again, advertise your product across all of the forums at a low, low rate here on the Gear Radio Network. Live from the Wolf Den Studios, you are listening to Better Live Than Dead. 
We're back here on the Better Live Than Dead podcast talking baseball now. I'm not thinking the song is done. That's fine. I'll just go take it from the old episode and put it in. I don't care. <laughs> Once you've done it, you've always done it. That's how it works here in a podcast world. That's right. Uh, we'll just start off with some news real quick. Boston Red Sox second baseman Dustin Pedroia back to the disabled list with a hamstring injury. Uh, you know, it, it didn't seem like he was ready to come back when he came back, uh, but uh, apparently it's good to know he wasn't right and they're smart enough to shut him down. So that, that's good news. That good. Plus the Red Sox don't have anything to play for, so why risk further injury or uh, potentially harmful, more harmful injury just because you want to get back now? Right. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies pitcher, at least at the time, uh, Cole Hamels throws a no-hitter. Now, here's the interesting part about it, Perez. He becomes the first pitcher to no-hit the Cubs since 1972. That's not bad. And the best part about that no-hitter is that the center fielder almost blew it because he fell on the warning track and had to lunge forward to catch the ball. Yeah, that was a good correction, though. It was very good. But it was like, oh man, is this really gonna is this really gonna be what costs a no hitter? But right for Cole Hamels, what a way to end a career in Philadelphia. We'll talk a little about that more in a second. Uh, Chicago Cubs catcher David Ross comes in in relief, uh, throws a shutout inning, and then hits a home run. He becomes the first reliever in over five years to hit a home run. Now, obviously, I know that he's a, a position player, but technically, since he was a pitcher, he's a relief pitcher. He hits a home run. We set that one back to zero. This week, San Francisco Giant pitcher Tim Hudson defeats the Oakland Athletics and becomes the 15th pitcher in Major League Baseball history to win uh, at least one game against all 30 active Major League teams. That's a pretty damn good impress. Uh, I can't. I, I can't think of the word I was going to say. That's a very impressive I achievement. One I don't ever want to disrespect anybody last time. I'm disrespected. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, I don't have a problem, but I think we should all uplift each other. Lewis, what's going on over there? Anybody's... You there? Hey, you, man, you disappeared for a second there. I just heard something. Some some ladies were talking to me. Yeah, that was weird. My, my phone moved you over to not hands-free for some, for, for some reason. So we just got the radio for a second. Yeah, sorry about that. That's cool. Uh, Boston Red Sox pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez becomes the first left-handed pitcher since at least 1914 to allow one or no runs in seven of his first 11 career outings, all being starts. Seems like the Red Sox have a nice little diamond in the rough for that kid. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Coming from a Red Sox fan, I mean, obviously, but you see him too, Perez. Uh, it's just, it, might, it might not be a bad thing. Yeah. In uh, the, Darwin, the Darwin Award winner, uh, New York Mets relief pitcher Henry Mejia suspended 162 games for a positive PED test. It's his second failure this year. He pitched in seven games before failing another test for steroids. Now, mind you, the the steroids he failed for are the two easily most easily detectable steroids, uh, according to multiple baseball sources. So he was just doing it and didn't care if he got caught, apparently. Good job. What a moron. Pretty much. Miami Marlin outfielder, I almost that that feels still feels weird for, to me to say for some reason. Miami Marlin outfielder Ichiro Suzuki collects his twenty nine hundredth career hit. It seems almost a lock that he'll get three thousand in Major League Baseball. He already has three thousand career with uh, with Japan, uh, his Japan career combined with his Major League career. But one hell of a baseball career for sure. I always wonder, Perez, what would have happened if Ichiro played his entire career in america oh my goodness he uh, yeah he would have been unstoppable he might have been the greatest he he still might be the greatest one of the greatest hitters he is let's put it this way he is one of the greatest hitters we've ever seen if he played his whole career in america he may and may have ended up being the greatest hitter we've ever seen that's a true story he knows how to get on base yes he does usually with a single but still he gets on base the baseball hall of fame rules that BBWAA voters who are 10 or more years removed from covering baseball can no longer vote for the Hall of Fame. So it's kind of just clearing out the, the, the backlog of old writers who are alive and able to vote but haven't worked in baseball forever. So that, I guess that's good news. Now, uh, I want to talk about, because this week was the, the 2015 Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Randy Johnson, Craig Biggio, 
John Smoltz, Pedro Martinez all going to the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and well-deserved, too. But uh, I w- it's already time now. The page is closed on 2015, so the page opens on 2016, or the page turns to 2016. Uh, now, there's there's four names that pop out to me that seem most likely to go in, and uh, and we'll talk about it in just a second, but I want to run through these names real quick. Ken Griffey Jr., first time on the ballot. He's a lock for sure. Uh, oh, Mike, yeah, absolutely. Mike Piazza headed into his fourth year on the ballot. Had 69.9% of the vote. You need 75% or more to get in. I feel like next year he'll get in. Uh, Jeff Bagwell, sixth time on the ballot, 55.7% last year. Uh, I don't know if he'll get enough to get to 75, but there should see a jump in his numbers. And Tim Raines, ninth time on the ballot, second to last time he'll be eligible, 55% even. I wonder if we see a bigger jump in his numbers this year because he's getting closer to being off the ballot, I know, um, I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I, I think the hall of fame voting is kind of dumb because I don't necessarily understand how Tim Raines isn't a hall of famer until the ninth or 10th time he's on the ballot. It's like either you're a hall of famer or you're not. Right. That's how I always felt. It'll never be like that, but I always felt like you're a hall of famer or you're not. Um, so I, I think Griffey Piazza are definitely locks for next year. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of big names on the, on the ballot this year. I mean, there's, there's Griffey, there's Trevor Hoffman who has 601 saves. I think Hoffman's a hall of famer, not this time around in a couple of years. He may be, but right now I don't think he'll be a hall of famer. Uh, Billy Wagner, also a big name, 422 career saves. One of the best relievers of his time. I don't necessarily think he makes it for a while. If ever you, you and I, uh, or me and you Perez both know how much, uh, the Hall of Fame doesn't value relief pitchers, so he may right. not he may not make it. If he doesn't make it, if he does make it, it'll be uh, it'll be a while down the road. Um, so, like I said, Griffey, Piazza, Bagwell, Tim Raines, all likely to see bumps in their numbers. Now, uh, with lesser lesser names on the ballot this year, do you think guys like Schilling, Bonds, and Clemens will see an increase in their voting totals? Now, last year. Schilling had 39.2%, Bonds had 36.8%, and Clemens had 37.5%. So they need a big jump, almost 40%, uh, to get into the Hall of Fame. But do you think they see a, a good enough jump this year where they may be able to get their hopes up for future years? I think there will be. I mean, you're coming to the, like you said, you're coming to a spot where there's very few real quality individuals that could get in. Uh, so they're going to have to to do something to make sure that there's inductions into the Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, what was it last year when there was no one in, induced? I think, that was two, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. You know, so and that was kind of a uh, that was kind of a r- ridiculous situation. So I think they're going to have to start making some adjustments just to make sure people who deserve to be in there actually do get in. I think so. I mean, I, I certainly think Schilling belongs in the Hall of Fame just based off of his his postseason merits alone. I know we saw a guy right. like, I mean, Pedro Martinez and Curtis Schilling are two different pitchers, but Pedro retired with 219 wins and he's in the Hall of Fame. Granted, right. he, was mo- he was the most dominant pitcher of, of his time and one of the greatest pitchers we've ever seen. That was his career was cut short by a shoulder injury. But, uh, you you think that uh, <coughs> excuse me? You'd have to think that that Schilling gets more votes. I I think Bonds and Clemens see a small bump, but I don't I don't necessarily think that they are, are headed to the Hall of Fame anytime soon, if ever. Uh, I know Bonds, as mentioned last week, that they just cleared him of any wrongdoing. The government ended their prosecution of Barry Bonds, but right. I honestly don't even think that's enough. I mean, it's it's. Still a witch hunt for for those guys in 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 the baseball Hall of Fame and to try to get into the baseball Hall of Fame and the writers just want nothing to do with it. So we'll end up seeing what happens. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work out if they cut voters from the Hall of Fame if they add more younger voters. I'm not sure, right. but oh, excuse me. You have to think that <laughs> some, something has to something's got to give. I I agree. We're getting to the point now where there's going to be one or maybe one, maybe two big names per year, but it's not going to be these stacked classes. Cause I mean, even if like say, say Jeff Bagwell gets in or Tim Raines gets in or they don't, they only have a couple more years left in the ballot. 
because it's only right. 10 years now. So, so things are definitely, things are definitely going to, uh, to, to be crazy in the next couple of years in, in terms of the baseball hall of fame. And I certainly look forward to it because I mean, you want to see your favorite players immortalized in, in, in Cooperstown and, that's, I mean, that's how I look at it. You know, the the, the guys I grew up with, like Pedro Martinez. You know, seeing him go in the Hall of Fame, that's awesome. Right. But we we will certainly see what uh, what what the future holds for these guys and uh, all the other Hall of Famers, potential Hall of Famers coming up. Now I want to uh, I want to move over to the trade deadline. Uh, as mentioned, it is Thursday, so we are at, at, at post time. It's Thursday, the day before the, the trade deadline. But a lot of stuff's already happened, so we can uh, we can certainly discuss a large amount of what's going on. First off, Houston fires the first shot of the deadline, acquiring pitcher Scott Casimir from the Oakland Athletics. A very very solid move uh, for Houston to shore up their rotation just a little more and bolster it heading towards a potential postseason berth. And it looks like they have a very solid shot at a postseason berth. Uh, we've already talked about them a little while ago, but, you know, one of the worst teams in baseball last year, and now they're one of the best teams this year. It's right. crazy how that works out. The Pittsburgh Pirates acquire third baseman Ramos Ramirez from Milwaukee. Ramirez said it's his last year in baseball. Crazy because he starts his career with the Pirates, and he goes back to, to Pittsburgh to potentially help them make the playoffs and also bookend his career. Uh, the Angels acquire third baseman Connor Gillespie. He was a DFA in, in Chicago uh, with the White Sox. That that would be to take over uh, and help fill the hole for David Freeze, who was injured last week. St. Louis bolsters their bullpen with pitcher Steve Ciszek. Uh He was the closer one time for the Marlins, has struggled. But recently for the Marlins, uh, he has been damn near lights out. So that's a, that's a very good move. And if the St. Louis Cardinals do anything, it's, they, they make smart moves. And as we mentioned that, you know, they, they also, like we said today, they traded one of their top pitching prospects straight up for Brandon Moss, right? who, who is certainly going to help that, that team out. And they may have lost Matt holiday for a while who strained his right quadriceps muscle again, but there there's, there's a reason why the Cardinals are always one of the best teams in baseball because they're, they're one of the best run teams in baseball. So, We'll continue to see what they uh, what they what they plan on doing in in terms of um, getting better or potentially replacing Matt Holiday. But uh, I mean, can you can you really replace someone like Matt Holiday? You, you can't. I was trying to think. That's what I'm trying to think of as I'm talking. I mean, it, it's it's very hard to replace a guy like Matt Holiday, but you you have to do your best. Right. Unfortunately, and and Brandon Moss may not be the guy, but it, it may be enough to at least. Hold you over, maybe. So I'm looking we'll at see. I'm looking at the tweet bots right now as I as I talk. Um, okay, sorry. By the way, on the tweet bots, you can follow me. I'm Ryan uh, at WolfBLTD. You can follow Mr. Perez at MRLG Perez. That's right. Uh, the New York Mets make a big splash. They acquire infield infield and outfielder Kelly Johnson. He plays both positions and third baseman Juan Uribe as they look to bolster their chances at a playoff spot, which is also very surprising. The Kansas city Royals uh, stake their claim in the AL as they acquire pitcher Johnny Cueto from the Cincinnati Reds, a very bold move by Kansas city, but those are the types of moves you can make when you have, uh, those are the types of, of moves you can make when you are, a very good team looking to get over that bump to the World Series and, and potentially win the World Series because obviously we know they were there last year. They need to get a little better just to get over that that hump. And, and Johnny Cueto might be that guy. I mean, their their starters have not been great this year. I believe before the deal they had they were averaging the worst innings per start. I believe in the, in right. the either the American League or just Major League Baseball. But either way, not good. So Cueto should help shore that up. Uh, it's a it's a good. I think it's a solid uh, a solid pickup, a very smart trade. Right, the fun, right, the funny, right. The funny story behind that one was that uh, Cueto was set to start, and they told him, uh, they told him, they said, you know, you're not going to start today. We're going to trade you. And he said, okay, whatever. And then he ended up starting, and then gets traded after because they thought he was going to get traded to Kansas City before the game. It didn't work out. And then they said, well, uh oh, we're going to trade you. I guess after the game now, so. <laughs> Whatever works out, as long as he's happy with his new team, which it looks like he is for sure. 
Uh, the Angels acquire outfielder Shane Victorino, depth guy. He'll probably be a, a platoon guy. I know uh, me being a big Red Sox fan, it was I was sad to see him go, but you know he's been injured really ever since after 2013. Uh, that was, I mean, it, the Red Sox no doubt don't win the World Series without Shane Victorino in 2013. That's for sure. Right. So you know, it's it. He he did his job when it came to uh, when it came to being a Boston Red Sox. They brought him in to help win the World Series. He did that. And then he was hurt, but they, at least they give him a good enough shot to make the playoffs again and potentially win another World Series with the Angels. Uh, the Mets bolster their bullpen with uh, uh, acquiring pitcher Tyler Clippard, who will be their setup man. Very, very, very good move for the Mets there. Toronto with the shocker, absolute shocker of a deal. They acquire shortstop Troy Tulowitzki from the Colorado Rockies. Uh, this one blew my mind because I, you know, we, we've we've known tulowitzki has been in the market for a couple of years now. He has that massive contract. It's a very good shortstop, one of the best in the majors, but he has had trouble staying healthy. But this this tells me that the Blue Jays are absolutely a win now team, which I mean for their fans is a, is a is a wonderful thing. But you know, it's uh, certainly. Hard to swallow because you, you you pay a, a large price for for Tulowitzki with prospects, and then you trade Jose Reyes as well. But the player you're getting in return is absolutely worth it. I mean, if right. if he can stay, if you know, if he can play 120, 130 games a year, that's not bad for a guy who's had injury trouble. And right. uh, it's gonna it's certainly gonna bolster that lineup. I mean, their their pitching is not great, but. They they put up a boatload of runs a game, and like I said, with the lineup they have with with Encarnacion and Batista and Donaldson and now Tulowitzki, good luck. Seriously, have fun with that one. Yeah, that's a pretty formidable lineup. Uh, looking at Kansas City again, they acquire infielder Ben Zobrist. The Angels pull off two deals to acquire. Outfielder David Murphy and outfielder David DeJesus. Pittsburgh acquires pitcher Joe Blanton, who was DFA'd by Kansas City, to activate Johnny Cueto. The Dodgers acquire pitcher Matt Latos, outfielder Mike Morse, pitcher Alex Wooden, relief pitcher Jim Johnson, and, and one of the bigger deals that we've seen in a while, let alone for this deadline. Um, now, this is interesting because it does look like the Dodgers may be turning Alex Wood, who they acquired from the Braves in a three in the three team deal. They may try to turn him for David Price in Detroit to bolster their rotation. So they would essentially be adding Matt Latos and David Price to their rotation and Jim Johnson to their bullpen. So the Dodgers are loading up, trying to put themselves over the top. I mean, at this point, if they don't go deep in the playoffs and even make the World Series. You have to wonder when they're going to blow the thing up and, and, and try to bring a new manager in because I, I know this is kind of speculation at this point, but when your team is spending a ton of money, I think it's well over $200 million on a team this year, and you either don't make the playoffs or you're out in the first round or the second round, I mean, right? at some point in time, excuse me, I don't know why I keep yawning. At some point in time, you have to wonder, okay, We've tried everything we can try. Now what can we do to change? And, and maybe a, a change of face behind the bench can do it. But for now, they are certainly doing everything they can to kind of affect the outcome of the National League now. if I mean, if the Dodgers get David Price and they have Matt Latos and Matt Latos can pitch decent, I'm not, you know, I would I don't know if I would put them at the top of contenders in the National League, but they are certainly up there for sure. Yeah, no, I can agree with you there. Uh, the Texas Rangers finally put the national nightmare to bed when they acquire pitcher Cole Hamels from the Phillies. It was an eight-player deal, six for six players going to Philly, two players going to Texas. It's a smart move. Uh, it's it's a future move for sure because you Darvish and, and Cole Hamels will be a nice one-two punch in that rotation next season. But for now, it's uh, it just looks like a move. Oh, excuse me. That will certainly. I don't know. I'm not tired. I just can't. I just got down. It must be because it's so cold in the basement. I was outside where it was warm, and I okay. came in the basement. I just can't stop yawning. Uh, Cole Hamels was rumored to be going to a lot of places, but obviously Texas wins the, the sweepstakes. I know, for instance, uh, personally, the Boston Red Sox uh, were interested, but 
Apparently, his no-trade clause was a non-starter. Cole Hamels did not want to waive his no-trade clause to go to the Red Sox. So, whatever. It is what it is, I guess. But he should do just fine in Texas, that's for sure. Now, the uh, the one head-scratcher of the deadline so far, on Wednesday night, we, uh, we being the internet and the tweet bots, saw that the Mets were set to acquire... Uh, outfielder Carlos Gomez Re- reacquired Carlos Gomez because he was traded to the Twins in a deal for Johan Santana and then was dealt to the Brewers after that. Uh, so the Mets were going to reacquire Carlos Gomez. It looked like the deal was ready to go. Everyone was on Twitter. You know, Carlos Gomez, uh, his teammates tweeted about it. Uh, Mets fans, Brewers fans, Major League Baseball was tweeting about it. But apparently something just something just didn't sit right. I think we have a visitor coming here. Something didn't just sit right with the Mets. Apparently, it was a uh, it was a, a hip issue with Gomez that really freaked right. out the Mets organization. But a lot of right. people a lot of people also think that it may have been a money a money issue uh, with the Mets as well. So it, it's not a good look for the Mets at all because they they had uh, I think it was Wilmer Flores was on the field crying during the game. Because he was he was going to be the guy that was traded, and he apparently was here in the rumblings. And uh, I I don't know, Delilah. You want to say hi? Come here. Hold on. You got to talk in the microphone. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Tell everybody who you are. I'm Delilah. All right, go back upstairs. Oh, careful. <laughs> you did. You told everybody your name was Delilah. No, I yeah. Oh, oh, hold on. You want to... Okay. My unicorn's name is Trixie and Princess Puppy. All right, say bye. 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 All right, go upstairs, baby. Okay. So the so the Mets were the Mets were freaked out, apparently because of the hip issue, and then then they said because of money. So it just it just really looks like that. Uh, yeah, it says it says here right here that. Uh, Beat writer for the Brewers said, "I'm told the Carlos Gomez trade was more financial than medical. Here are the details." And then he did not tweet a link out. So, actually, I'll just pop that. He just did tweet out a link. So let me click that. Good timing, right? Right. So apparently, you know, it's it. it, it I guess it is what it is. You know, it looked like Carlos Gomez was ready to go back, excited to go back to the Mets. But you know, the, the Mets have done enough so far where they they may continue to try to trade for somebody. Uh, but. Let's see here. I and and apparently too the the Brewers still may try to trade uh, Carlos Gomez this year. Yeah, Scott okay. Boris. Scott Boris said Carlos never had an issue with his hip. Uh, we don't feel there's anything wrong with it. But it says here the Mets wanted the Brewers. Uh, source said in the initial talks Mets wanted the Brewers to take center fielder Juan Lagares in a trade. Brewers said no in part because Lagares has an elbow issue, but also because he has a four year twenty three million dollar contract extension that kicks in next year, and the Brewers did not want to pick up any of the money. Says so. After further talks, it was decided the Brewers would take Flores in addition to Wheeler, who is recovering from Tommy John surgery and won't be able to pitch before next June. The source said the Mets then asked the Brewers to throw a 2016 competitive balance round B pick in. They were recently rewarded. The Brewers said no. The source said the Brewers were then asked to put some money in the trade to cover part of what's remaining on Gomez's contract, including a nine million dollar salary next year. Considering the talent level of Gomez and his reasonable contract, the Brewers understandably declined to put any cash in the deal. Uh, according to the source, the Mets came back and said they were calling the deal off because of concerns over medical over medical records. Okay, so the Brewers were nice about it and said, you know, it is what it is. Let bygones be guy- bygones. Trades aren't trades until they're official. And then the Mets just crapped all over it. So uh, it appears from that article uh, by, let me get the guy's name correct so I can give proper. Tom, uh, his, his, his Twitter name is just Tom. Why do I have to, I have to reclick the link? Pain in my ass. The internet is is so dumb sometimes. <laughs> he writes for the Milwaukee, Wisconsin Journal Sentinel. Tom Hodricourt, I believe is how you pronounce his name. It's at H-U-D-I-H-U-D-R-I-C-O-U-R-T on Twitter. He says flat out from his uh from his sources that the deal was nixed because the Mets pretty much wanted the Brewers to take on a lot of money. And then pay for Carlos Gomez to play in New York, and they said no. Right. So that makes sense to me. 
I mean, we'll we'll see how that one ends up playing out. But I know the Mets are hard on cash or hard for cash right now. So I, I guess we'll we'll see how the one plays out in the end. But like I said, I think Carlos Gomez, if he doesn't get traded uh, by Friday, he'll end up being traded this off season for sure. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think so too. He's he's valuable, and the Brewers are trying to rebuild, and they just don't have. I guess they just don't have a spot for him. Well, they have a spot for him, but they want to get younger and and, and get prospects and may, uh, make as much off him as you can when you can. Right, makes sense. One last thing before we send this bad boy to commercial break: an update on Jose Barrios, the gear guy in Rochester. He started on uh, Tuesday, the twenty eighth, I believe it was, uh, for the Rochester Red Wings. As mentioned, he got the win. He's two and zero on the uh, on his uh, in his young AAA career. Six innings pitched, five hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts, and three walks. His ERA is down to 3.52. He had 100 pitches thrown, 61 of them for strikes. So he seems to be coming around. He seems to be getting the, the grasp on how to pitch to how to pitch to AAA batters, how to pitch in AAA. So that's that's just all very good news to, to see him developing. Slowly but surely, uh, like we said before, don't expect to see him in Minnesota this year, but if he continues to put together a a strong end uh, a strong second half in in the 2015 uh, baseball season, who knows? Maybe he could see himself getting a spring training invite and in, in, in potentially having a shot to make the rotation out of spring training. So, as usual, we will keep you posted on that. You can check out uh, BL at BLTD Sports to keep you posted on Jose Barrios there uh, at Wolf BLTD at Mr. at Amaral G Perez. If I try to actually spot out instead of just speaking it. But uh, with that being said, this has been baseball talk. We'll talk more about uh, we will talk more about the trade deadline next week. Wrap everything up and set the scene for the remainder of the baseball season. But when we come back from this commercial break, we'll wrap this podcast up and send things on the road. Stick around. More of the Better Live Than Dead podcast next. Do you enjoy listening to Better Live Than Dead, but you're not always by your laptop to hear it on GearNetwork.com? Not to worry, we've got you covered. Better Live Than Dead and all other Gear Network podcasts can now be heard on iHeartRadio, iTunes, in the Zoom Marketplace, on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and on TuneIn Radio. So make sure you get one of the aforementioned apps to stay up to date with the latest Gear Network podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Perez here, telling you about FanDuel's One Day Fantasy Baseball Leagues. Every day you pick the player you want, you can pick a whole team, and play for real money against other users. FanDuel has over 20,000 one-day leagues, so joining in is never an issue. Also, there's no daily commitment, so you play whenever you want. The best part? Over $2 million in prizes every single day. And if you sign up through gearnetwork.com backslash FanDuel, You help support the network and keep this podcast free. You're listening to Better Live Than Dead on the Gear Radio Network. Now, here's Perez and Ryan. Back here on the Better Live Than Dead podcast. Wrapping things up. Going to make it real quick over here because I know, Lewis, you have to get back to work. Thank you, first off. Thank you. Right off the bat for joining me. Uh, Absolutely. I I know it's, uh, it's, it's during a week. So it, it makes it kind of difficult, but uh, I, I appreciate you being flexible and able to make this podcast happen because my availability has been kind of shot lately. But you know, you got to have fun at some point in time in life, and unfortunately, the only time well, I can good. the only time I can have fun is the weekend. So uh, I want to say thank you to each and every single one of you who tune in every single week here on the Better Live Than Dead podcast. I want to say thank you to we John. It. Absolutely, I want to say thank you to John. I want to say thank you to Dawn. Uh, I want to say check out the House Party Podcast and Get Ready America over on uh, GearNetwork.com and on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, wherever you can hear the podcast, check it out. Uh, Also, make sure you check out BLTDSports.com. Again, we're kind of in the summer months where there's not a lot of stuff going on, so the content is kind of slow, but we're we're still getting stuff up. Uh, Brayton Brayton Wilson, who has... uh, been one of the, the top writers on our site. He he continues to pump out some good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com backslash I believe it's BLTD Podcast on the on the Facebook page. 
if that's wrong, just yell at me. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at WolfSHC. Follow Perez at MRLG Perez. I also want to say thank you to uh, every week as we do say thank you to Dapper's Not Dead Barber Social Club. They've got a new thing going on. Uh, check out Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff for more. Uh, DNDBSC.com, I believe, is the website. And uh, also thank you to IndyCard Media for all that they do for the Better Live Than Dead podcast for Get Ready America and the Gear Radio Network. Uh, actually, sometime soon, Lewis, hopefully before you come over, we will have a an official studio logo for the new Wolf Den Studios at the Eminon Family Estate. Cool. I know it's very exciting. I'm excited. I know it's not very exciting for you, but it, it'll be nice when you see it. No, well, that's pretty cool. I think you'll like it here. It's a nice place. Nice, very comfortable place to <laughs> podcast. And, I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting to figure it all out when we have we'll have to get some chairs and and, and set some things up. But I, I'm 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 ready for the new challenge. <clears throat> Me too. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> With that being said, uh, as I said, we're getting out of here kind of quick, but we are better live than dead. You're not. We'll see you next week. I think maybe maybe next week. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, Lewis, but maybe next week we'll be reunited. Maybe. And it feels so good. I say that because I'll play that song as one of the bumpers. There we go. It's been a while since we've had a podcast together. It has been. So we'll, we'll get together sometime soon. I appreciate you joining me today, man. Thanks for, yeah, absolutely. Gotta get the, we got to get our show done, man. We have to. Because it just doesn't feel right not doing it. Like I, I've, I've, there, there have been weeks where I thought about maybe, maybe we shouldn't do the podcast this week, and I thought about that for about two seconds, and then smacked myself in the face and said, "What the hell are you thinking? You got to right, do it." Exactly. So, enjoy your work. Thanks, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, and everyone Thank listening, you. enjoy your day. Whenever this day is that you're listening, enjoy that day that you are listening. Uh, exactly. Uh, I appreciate it. again. We appreciate you joining us. You guys are the reason we're here. Have a good one, my friends, and we will talk to you sometime very soon. Later.